friends, welcome to the show to be named later. I'm your host, Johnny Voss, and I'm alongside a guy who never met a shot he didn't like or take. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Carl Anthony, I'm sorry, Noah Storzinger. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, um, <laughs> how you doing tonight, buddy? Pretty good. How about you? Okay, well, I'm, I'm not in a very good place right now. I'm kind of in a dark place, man. And I'm telling you, Noah, you know, you know me your whole life, but you haven't known me um, even in, in darker times when it comes to, to Minnesota sports. And, you know, I'm at a threshold right now. I'm at a threshold for how much abuse I can take as a Minnesota sports fan. And I'm telling you, buddy, I'm, I'm a race car right now, but I'm a race car in the red. And I, I'm telling you, Jules, it's dangerous to get a race car in the red. And and as far as Monday night uh, and our performance and, and thinking about it, I mean, Monday night against the, the Charlotte Hornets, uh, I was a mushroom cloud laying motherfucker, motherfucker. Okay. And every time I came back Tuesday, Wednesday, now it's Thursday, I had to think about my team. And I'm telling you, I was Superfly TNT. I was the guns of the Navarone. All right. And here is my deal right now. This team is going to have to, the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to have to win me back a little bit and prove some things to get me back to how I felt about this team two weeks ago. And, you know, and I don't mean to throw you under the bus, buddy, but hate to break it to you though, bud, but this is not the best team in the NBA. They're not the best team in the Western conference. And I would say right now, they might be about number five in the NBA, in my opinion. Uh, okay, that's my tirade. Oh, we're going to go further on that, but go go ahead, man, because I know that was a lot. Well, I'll say this. Um, the Charlotte game was frustrating. I mean, we were texting back and forth. I I thought, I mean, I, regardless of, of the Carl Anthony Towns experience that we went through, um, that should have been a win, but – uh, you know, yesterday the the uh, the Washington game was was another interesting thing, um, and I, I know a lot of fans are down, but I'm gonna tell you one thing: I'm not worried. Okay, and not that's worried. that's why I like having having this kind of interaction because I do need a yin to the yang, uh, I need a positive to the negative, all those kinds of things. Now, um, it's it's funny because I will echo. Uh, what what Finchie said, what most people are saying, Monday night against the Charlotte Bobcats was the most disgusting, immature, hairy high school basketball that I've ever seen. It was the most unprofessional thing I've ever seen. Well, not we had Ricky Davis. Uh, it, it was the most unprofessional thing that I've ever been a part of in, in pro sports, in, in my opinion. And the funny thing is, most people think that it was because of Carl Anthony Towns' shot selection. And yeah, we'll get to that in, in a little bit, but it, it wasn't. The, the most disgusting, immature, me first play that happened on Monday night against the Charlotte Bobcats was the defense. That overall, it was. You give 128 points up to that team, and everybody stopped playing any kind of they it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. Uh, and I'm telling you, man, it you know, one of the things that I a point that I brought up with a friend was we talking about us versus Oklahoma City. And I said, you know, Oklahoma City is a balanced team because top 10 in offense, top 10 in defense. We were number one in defense, not in top 10 in offense. If our defense breaks down the way it did on Monday night, Wolves fans, we have we have some trouble ahead. There, there are glaring holes on this team, absolutely. And you knew that going – Shake Milton is, was, was – was supposed to be a, a completely different player when we brought him in. He's supposed to be your scoring punch, secondary ball hander off the bench. He's just not that. You, you got a bunch of holes right now, but I, I, I think they will be filled come trade deadline, come buyout market. There, there are opportunities to get better. But yes, to your point, absolutely. When the defense breaks down, it becomes a lot harder. I think they're fifteenth or sixteenth currently uh, offensive rating, but. Um, they just didn't 
break down da- defensive breakdown is a, is a, to me was not what happened uh, on Charlotte. They just didn't play defense. They just didn't play defense. Right. It, to me, it's like, look, your, your defense can break down. If you, you know, maybe some schemes aren't working, whatever they're breaking. They just didn't give a shit because they wanted right. to see cat go for a hundred. But to me, I feel like an old team would have said it, it was just a, a, something that stuck out to me was the complete honesty from a guy like an Anthony Edwards who just said, yeah, honestly, we just fucking just didn't, we just want to see cat get a hundred. Wait, why? It, why? I, I know. And I know. And, and that is, Did he actually it, say that he, he said, honestly, we just, we, I guess we just stopped playing because we wanted to see cat get a hundred. Immature. And Immature. So, um, the, I, I go back and forth and I, and I think there's a level why? of what is showing. It? I think there's a level of showing an honesty of, Oh shit! Yeah, we actually, you know what? We gotta, we we have to be better. We it, it was, I think, an old immature team would be. Oh, I don't know. I think we could have. Think we could have done some. I don't. I don't know. It, it, it's hard for me to explain, but I just personally think that there is a a different level to this team. Of at least they came out and, and said how honest they were. Well, well, great because I I want to get to that in a second because I want to talk about Chris Finch. Um, and and as a coach, you got to stop that shit. In, in the middle. And, you know, for me, once Towns got to 50 in the second half, I think, yeah, fine. If you want to score 60, 70, 100, you're not going to get to 100, okay? Uh, but what bugged me the most about Carl Anthony Towns, and here's the thing, McDaniel already two-thirds of the way on the one player that I really am starting to not like on the Timberwolves. Carl Anthony Towns has now made the bubble. Okay, as a number two possible guy on a, a Timberwolves team where Johnny Voss always needs three guys to hate on. Okay, Towns is on it, and he wasn't for a long time for me. But here's the thing for Carl Anthony Towns to allow that shit to go on in his ninth year of NBA basketball and say, I am bigger than than anything on this floor right now. Bigger than my teammates, bigger than the Wolves, the 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 logo at center court, bigger than Minnesota fans, bigger than Chris Finch. For him to say, I'm just going to allow this to go on, immature, unprofessional, and ridiculous. And so I can't, I can't say, you know, well, I, I'm, I'm glad that they admitted that they fucked up, okay? You are a professional basketball team that it, it, it's nothing. You know what it reminded me of? Ricky Davis, not when he was with the Wolves, but Ricky Davis had a chance at a triple-double before before he joined the Timberwolves, and he, per, he, he purposely, he got the ball, he was all alone. He purposely tried to put it off the rim so he could get a rebound because he's all by himself, except he missed and he, it came back and it was a travel. And I thought that is the, like I say, unprofessional and immature bullshit. Okay. And you know, you want to talk about whose team it is. Carl Anthony Towns is a nine year veteran should have calmed everyone down and said, it's not about me. It's not about me getting a hundred. Come on. And, and he should have said this ends now. And, and instead, just kept firing. What was he, two for 10, two for 12 in the fourth quarter? Great, you got 60 points. Leave it alone now and win the fucking game. Yeah, he, he was he was here. I mean, I believe Finch touched to it. He was hero hunting, just point hunting, whatever. I mean, the guy was driving into four. Like the, Charlotte was is a shitty team, but they sure. knew what he was doing in a sense of, okay, yeah, he's got – you know, 50 against us, but it seems like he just wants the ball. Let's just trap him immediately in the lane. And he doesn't know how to handle a quadruple team. So he just turns the ball over or or throws up a dumb shot. Um, And that's what he was doing. And I think there are two aspects of that game that allowed him to do that one, because he's still immature. He is absolutely. That was an immature performance. One, you didn't have Mike Conley on the floor. And I think that was a big, a big thing. And that played into the wizards game as well. But two, he saw who else had a big game that day. And I believe he was trying to top it. And I think everyone else wanted him to top it. 
because Joel Embiid had 70 that night. Yeah. And I, it, to me, I also was like, man, it'd be cool if he could go for more than that. However, I, in my head, I'm also like, but I would also just prefer the win, especially against a Charlotte team. So I think obviously not having a Mike Conley to say, stop this bullshit. Right. Chris Finch also needs to do that too, though. Yeah. And he yeah. said, you know, I, I implored them, I implored them to stop, but it's like, okay. I mean, I mean, obviously it didn't work. So what's going to, what's the fix? What okay. is the fix? And, okay. There's a, there's a number of things that I want to touch on, on that. Okay. Because number one, I, I did not hold it. I mean, Conley may or may have not been able to control that because I, I don't know. Like when I was watching, I, I was like, what is this Jameson Winston getting everybody together and saying, we're going to override the coach and do whatever we want to do because we want uh, to suck Carl Anthony Towns toes because no, go out and win games and win the division, win the conference, win a championship instead of thinking of pie in the sky bullshit that no one cares about. Okay. Um, but my point on Conley was both Monday night and last night, you can't put that on one guy. I, I understand what he brings to this team. But if you are one 36-year-old point guard away from being a relevant team that, that could be a, an NBA champion contender or back to kindergarten, Come on, dude. Then, then we have been fooling ourselves in thinking that this is the team that we thought we knew all all season long. Don't you think? Well, absolutely, I, absolutely. And and Conley adds a lot. And I think we have been we have we have seen that all throughout the year of what he can do. Um, but this team and, and the guys around this team, I don't think have been around a couple vets and, and maybe that's what we we've seen is it does take more. And especially to win a championship, Mike Conley's not bringing a championship to Minnesota. I mean, it, it, he right. could, but, but that's where, that's where this February trade deadline and this bio market become extremely important for this team because additions, subtractions need to be made to this team to, to switch some things around. But again, like I said, I think a lot of fans hit the uber uber panic button the other night in in Charlotte. No, it well, just pissed kind of, me off. It just well, I, pissed me off. And I know, because I know, and it, it is immature like that in a game like that, and and absolutely throw all of prof all professionalism out the window, and and don't care about the 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 horse sense of what basketball is. Then, then that really worries me down the road that when we talked about turnovers and crunch time and how they play in the last five minutes, it's because of immaturity. Okay. But if you throw unprofessionalism into that, into that mix, then I don't think it's our year this year, folks. I really don't. And, and I don't want to say that I'm not over. I mean, if I'm overreacting, let, let me know I'm overreacting, but I watched the game last night against a terrible Wizards team, and that game was a lot closer than what it should have been. And I was not, I, I did not know in the fourth quarter if we were going to win that game or not. I, I don't think it's, I think every fan is absolutely justified to feel exactly the way you are feeling, exactly the way to feel what, what this whole franchise has felt for years and years and years. Um, but to my, you know, what I'm thinking right now, and the reason why I'm not necessarily worried right now is championship teams go through this during the season. They, there are, I understand this is, this is a, this game was, was, was tough for, for Wolves fans, but I, I got to look at it in a championship team. Isn't perfect. Isn't perfect. The right. whole season. They're not perfect. They go through these lulls. I mean, the Chicago Cubs, when they won the 2016 World Series, that team went through a tough stretch in July. I think it's the never beginning won of August. Series. So, no. um, but hey, they won the championship. There, there are teams yeah, that no. go through this stuff. Okay, but but that. Thank you for bringing that up, though, because that was a point. And as I get all passionate and fired up, I forget what I want to talk about. But I'm glad you brought that up because we talked earlier 
on this podcast about the wear and tear that goes with being a number one team in the Western Conference, how everyone's gunning for you and everything. And so if, if you, to me, if, if you looked at it and you were just like, no, man, they're tired. They need a break. They need, and that's why Conley sat again. I think last night was right because we want him around in April. Okay. But they didn't lose Monday and almost lose Wednesday because of fatigue or uh, everyone is just hammering on the wolves. They lost because of stupidity. And, and that's a, a whole different matzo ball, if you ask me, about getting worn down over the course of a grueling NBA season compared to being dumb, fuck, stupid. Right? This, I, yeah, no, yes. But, but, but also, um, and yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I think, though, when you look at this team top to bottom, this is besides a, a Mike Conley, uh, maybe, a, maybe a, eh, Kyle Anderson, but um, – this is some of the most winning that these guys have done right. professionally. Yep. So this is new. This Never is new. Yes, it's, it's, it's learning experiences and it's got to happen. It's got to okay. happen. Someday. Okay. So then my next point was, you know, when we talk about Finchie, uh, <laughs> because there's a couple points I want to make about this. Um, you wondered why he didn't, just say we're going to run you all up to Green Bay if you don't start doing what I'm asking you to do, right? Like, um, and some folks said, well, Adrian Griffin in Milwaukee, which I, I'm surprised, man. Like, a dude is 30 and 12, he wins 70 over 75% of his games, and they can them. And so, people are like, well, well, Finch, you know, maybe. Is, is concerned about things. I don't buy any of that. We'll get into Griffin in a second. But then what I was not pleased about, because I heard it on three different shows or publications or whatever it was, was that when Finch said what he did about the Wolves, disgusting, immature, unprofessional, which are the words that I used um, as well, then they came out and they were like, they had to make sure that the players weren't bruised by what he said. And he had to come out and say, no, the, he said the same thing to us. So he didn't go to the media because we don't, you know, if, if Finch is going to take off his pillow gloves and, and punch for the nose, we got to make sure that these million dollar babies, immature, embarrassing, unprofessional babies don't get their ego bruised a little too much by the coach who has every fucking right to talk to him any way he wants. Right. And so we got to make sure. And so, Paul oh, heart be still because Carl Anthony towns and everybody else came out and said, coach said exactly. He was right. He was right all the way across the board. So thank you, Chris Finch for not causing mental anguish for these players who absolutely have not shown up this week but i mean i'm glad they're they're in a good spot mentally because i'm not right now no fin finch is the guy finch is finch is yeah. i think one of my favorite yeah. coaches i've ever seen coach this team um and i've seen a, a lot unfortunately right um but that was my i think that was my concern when i when i saw that press conference was well shit is he gonna lose the locker room now after he said that that was whatever and um I, I credit the guy like in today's environment, I, I credit that he was able to like, no, they still back that guy. And I, I love it because he has every right know, as coach to, to tell them that absolutely. that's what a coach does. And, and you know what? I, the, I hear the, you know, I don't know if you want to go to Griffin right now, but I, the, the reason why yeah, I hear a big reason why that, yep. you know, Griffin was, was kicked out. Was he told the star players to win? You got to have to sacrifice a little bit. And I, I heard that they they weren't um, too keen on that, and he lost the locker room a while ago. Apparently, oh, I mean they were talking to Doc. Ago. They were there, talking there to Doc Rivers. They were talking to Doc Rivers in December. I heard as a special um, consultant. Yes, and and so we we talk about LeBron being a coach killer, but how many fucking coaches has Giannis had now? I mean, the guys had a lot. Yeah. Okay. But there, apparently there were a, a lot of other layers to the Adrian Griffin thing in Milwaukee, because like I said, I was like 30 and 12, like, how does that even happen? But um, 
I, I think it was earlier in the year. Uh, so his assistant coach was Terry Stotts from Portland who coached Lillard for many years. And apparently they got into a, a verbal a Griffin and Terry Stotts. He quit the day before training camp, I think because they were already upset about the way he was going to utilize Lillard. And that's what I've heard in Milwaukee is that uh, Lillard is not being utilized the way. And that was because of Adrian Griffin. Now, the other thing is his, his schemes, losing players, uh, their, their confidence that was evident throughout. And like, to me, then the bucks were like, no, our chance, our window is, you know, maybe that far, but it's, it's, it's closing in five years. We might not be a championship. We need to win now. And this guy is not going to get us to that, that, that place. And so, you know, if, if that's the case, then he walked himself out of that job. Um, I just got a kick out of the bucks. Like, and we are so, we are so sure that Mr. Griffin will be a successful NBA coach in the years to come or whatever, where they're basically saying, get the fuck out of here, man. Like, <laughs> well, it's funny too. So the, the bucks, I believe had just finalized with, with uh, doc rivers, um, which means they'll big, lose game seven. Yeah. Every one time. Their, well, one of their big trade targets of the off or of the, uh, for the trade deadline was Matisse Thibel out of Portland which is funny because it's not a trade target anymore because him and Doc Rivers in Philadelphia did not get along. So he's no longer a traded or a trade target, which I thought was funny. Okay. Okay. Uh, last thing when it comes to babies or not babies, but uh, just whatever. And, and, you know, I, you're going to get this folks with Johnny Voss. Sometimes I, like I say, my threshold is wearing thin, you know, as far as how much abuse I can take. So, you know, I, you know, tomorrow I'll be back to what, where I need to be. But anyways, um, interesting thing, because I, I know that I texted you during the game on Monday night and I said, Edwards only got one shot in the first half. And you said, Hey, let, let cat go. Okay. That's fine. That proved to me that uh, he was, not invested in in the game or himself as an NBA player because in the second half I couldn't believe how many times he had the ball he had a chance like and like I say as far as shots that you, you met that you never liked that guy will shoot the ball every single time if he can and seeing him kick the ball back out to the perimeter and I was just like wait, what's going on so you knew it was it was a done deal right like that he was not in it for team himself anything they were just trying to give cotton towns whatever it is right they were trying to give towns a thing now his stat line i mean obviously he didn't score a lot had 11 assists um however um that was a, a game he might not have played he was sick um okay, okay good. during that game so good. i just wanted to you know in, in case okay. anyone's like well okay. he's not a mvp nope. guy he was sick nope. and he played so, okay so let's get to that because Thank you for bringing that up because that's my next point. So I'm only going to say this uh, and, and, and don't give me because I love Anthony Edwards, but here's the deal. Edwards wants to be better than his Aaroness, right? He's going to be better than Michael Jordan. That's what he says. Here's the deal. Y'all sick. Okay. I remember, and that's before your time, Michael Jordan, 103. Flu huh? Flu what? game. Yep. 103 temperature. What does he do? Drops 53 a game winning shot. You want to be better than the best? Then maybe you have to play when you're sick, man. I And he played and added 11 assists too. So look, Because like, he I, only wanted to get Towns. Well, I think only a couple of his assists were to Towns. So I, I, I understand the, the thought process and I think I absolutely like – He's played through sicknesses before and, and played much better. Right. I don't know what he was feeling. No. Michael Jordan, I, I understand he had the fever, but I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I've played sick before and it sucked. I scored it one does. point one time. And, um, it does. you know, it's. But I've never had the drive. I mean, I've always wanted to be the best, but I never worked at being the best. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, okay. Um, final point I'm going to make about. Uh, oh, and by the way. Wednesday against the Wizards wasn't that great. 
I'm just going to say that again. Okay. So that's why I'm so down right now, but here's the thing. Uh, last thing on the wall so that we can switch, um, switch a little bit. Uh, LaMelo Ball. Okay. Now this dude, when I, you know, I don't watch a lot of Charlotte Hornets games. I'm not a big LaMelo Ball fan, but when I saw this on Monday night and I, this is what I envisioned watching LaMelo Ball playing in an NBA game against my team. I was like, that night where you're like, yeah, I got nothing else going to go on. I'm going to watch, I'm going to put a porno in. Okay. And you're, you're all excited about the porn that you're going to watch. And then all of a sudden the opening credits come out and they show and starring Lolo balls. And, and you see his face and you're like, Oh man, this guy, I don't know if I can, I can, I can watch this. I, I, I don't know. And then you understand he's got a 10, a uh, foot jump shot. He's got a lot of skills, this and that. And you still come away going, I don't know, man, I can't come away satisfied. He's kind of creepy. Your thoughts on LaMelo Ball? Because to me, he is not the rookie of the year. Anthony Edwards is the rookie of the year. No one can believe that he was the rookie. Like, I, I don't understand. And it was purely off of his hype. Or his his yeah, his dad's his hype. father his yep. yep yep and and look he's not a championship player and until he ever wins a championship I can be proved wrong he's never going to be a championship player he's never going to lead a team to a championship um, he's an idiot um, I don't, he's always hurt but I mean I he's he's not obviously going to ever win in Charlotte um, no there like I said when I talked about oh he's got skill but he does have skills I mean there were. There were a few times that I was just like, mm, yeah, that, that was that was kind of nice. But like I say, he's got this creepy way about him that I just can't, you know. And I apologize for being so graphic about you know, bringing, but but that's how it felt to me, you know. I, it, yeah, it. I don't I don't know you know what it is, um, but I like his brother. I like I like yeah. I like. I always Lando. thought he was better than. I, th I, I think he still is because he plays defense. So LaMelo has no interest in, in – I think he has interest in just the clout that comes with becoming a basketball player. And okay. that's it. it's been his whole life. Okay. All right. Well, now we're going to go to NFL. Unless you, you got anything else going on with uh, NBA basketball, you know, I think I think we covered our team. Uh, one, go ahead. One thing. Um the Wolves play the Thunder final matchup, I believe, on right. yep. either tomorrow or uh, I can't remember what day. But um, Not tomorrow. They, they've got the Nets tomorrow. I think is it they go to Houston and then OKC because they're on a four-game road trip. Yep. yep. I can't, uh, regardless, it, to me, one of the bigger games coming up. Um, your prediction for the Thunder, do we tie the series or do we go down 3-1? You have to because I, I just saw, uh, you know, when, when we were tied with the Thunder uh, and they're the number one seed because right now they've got a 2-1 lead on us. And then if, if we tie it up, then it goes – does it go by division records? Is that how they determine who's the higher seed? Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. You have to beat Oklahoma City. If you see that team in the playoffs and they have a 3-1 Deciding in regular season, I'm regular season different than playoffs. Anything can happen in a seven game series, but that gives you an extra feather in your hat if you're OKC. If you have beaten a team three or four times for stupidity and might think that you are able to do that every single night in a playoff series game, that that's my so I think. There haven't been any must wins this year for the Wolves. And obviously it's, you know, we're just over half. But I think the 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 last Oklahoma City matchup, I think that's a must win for the Wolves. If you are and remember, they have to still thrill me and win me back anyways. So you might as well fucking start right there. How about now? And then we, you know, we keep going, whatever. So is that your prediction? The Wolves will win that game? you might have to ask me after we see what Jay-Z's team is going to do tonight. You know, okay. uh, if, if we come out lethargic, we come out, uh, 
not playing the kind of basketball that the Wolves have been playing all season long. If they and yeah, fine, they're on the road. It doesn't matter. What do we do at Target Center? We laid a big shit burger. Okay, so uh, I, I think I could only answer that question after I see what what's going to go on tonight in Brooklyn, and, right. and then go because I think I think we got Houston. I think it's Dallas. Is it okay? All right, yep. all right. I'm gonna. Okay, no, it's the Spurs. Oh, the Spurs, Spurs and then Oklahoma City. So obviously, because I don't know you, I think you have to you have to prove that you are you. You've got three games in a row, actually four games in a row before the OKC game of games that you should be winning by twenty points. Don't you think? Yeah. Okay. All right. So all right. All right. NFL news. Uh, so a couple things I want to bring up. I mean, we can talk AFC NFC championship, but I don't think that we really need to. The big news coming out, um, which I was surprised, but not really surprised. Harbaugh goes to the chargers. Yeah, that was a, you know, I, I thought that was Belichick, Belichick's job. Um, but you know, I, I, I kind of like it. I, I think, um, you know, he finally gets back in the in the uh, the NFL, and um, it's a good team. It's a, it's a it is a good team. I thought that Belichick wants a win now team, and I and the Falcons just closed their position um, as of a couple hours ago. So interesting to see where Belichick goes now because I think there's a very few options of win now teams, but I, I well, like Harbaugh. That so that's that's where I I wanted to go with this because. I thought Belichick would probably go to Los Angeles. Um, and, and remember, in earlier podcasts, we had not talked about Atlanta. Now, everyone is saying that Atlanta is going to be the lock for Belichick. And the reason I bring that up is because ESPN came out officially and said, if Belichick goes to Atlanta, Kirk Cousins going to the Falcons is probably what and they went on record to say it. it. They may the Vikings still might have a shot, but if Belichick goes to Atlanta, it's probably a done deal that Kirk Cousins will go to Atlanta as well. And the reason is backing up exactly what you said: win now, and you need a quarterback. They have no quarterbacks, and Belichick's not going to. Even if they, they could move up to the number one overall, I don't think Belichick's going to waste. 72 or 73 you're on this planet on a rookie quarterback. I think he would go to a guy that he knows is a veteran leader that could run because Atlanta does have a lot of offensive weapons. And yep. so if that's the case, all right, that's going to, that's going to make it tough for uh Minnesota Vikings fans. Well, they, the Falcons just fin filled their position a couple hours ago. Oh, oh, the coach! It is the uh, the Rams defensive coordinator Raheem Morris. Really? Yep. Well, okay then. Kirk Cousins <laughs> is in Minnesota for a little longer. Okay. Uh, I wow, wow. That's what you get on the show to be named later. Uh, we were not informed, but now we're informed. I I did not hear that. I can't believe I didn't hear that. So, what's left for Belichick? Seattle. Well, Seattle, and you know what? A couple of people from work keep throwing me Washington, and I cannot no, no, see him no. in Washington. I do and, not and see that. And to me, Seattle, Tennessee, potentially, but – Now, wait a minute, though. If Belichick were to go to Washington, and he – or I'm sorry, as Miss Volt, my, my fifth-grade teacher, Washington, if, if Belichick goes to Washington, that that's kind of interesting because – would it mean a reunited Peaches and Herb, Kirk Cousins back in Washington? And would they bring back the Redskins name? I, I don't know. Like it's just Well, it's interesting because, you know, even if he goes to Seattle, is it would Seattle go out and maybe sign a, a Kirk Cousins? Because right, because they I mean, there are some people in Seattle that like Geno, right? But I guess if you, I mean, they were close to making the playoffs this year um, in a pretty bad division, right? Except for yep. San Francisco. So 
Kirk Cousins in Seattle to me would make more sense than Kirk Cousins in Washington. Uh, but would he make sense in Minnesota? I mean, it's going to get interesting. It, I mean, it's going to get really weird here in a few months, don't you think? Absolutely, because, I mean, I, I'm trying to remember all the head coaching jobs because I feel like there are so many open right, right now. So it was Seattle, Washington, Tennessee. Um, I believe the Raiders kept uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Pierce or Lloyd, uh, is that his name? Whoever the interim coach yeah, was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I think that's all of the opening jobs because Patriots just filled theirs. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, you still got two really good coaches out there in Vrabel and, and Belichick looking for jobs. So, um, and then it really, I, it scares me in the fact of, I'm wondering, does Kirk Cousins essentially follow Bill Belichick? Well, that that seems to be the fashionable idea right now. And, you know, Kirk keeps saying it's not about the money. But, but and I don't know, if you follow and like we've heard what he said about it, like, yeah, I'd be an idiot not to want to play for that guy because he is the greatest coach of all time. But I, but I, I don't guess, know. What do you, to me, now that I think about that, because – that was that was only my reason for saying does he just follow Bill Belichick because he said that. But I guess what else do you say to that question? No, I don't want to play for him. Well, exactly, and 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 Kirk's always he says the most even keel like down like he it's not like he he takes a side one way or another. Yeah, He's right. going to say everything and be diplomatic about how he's talking so that he doesn't ruffle feathers in Minnesota, but he doesn't close doors if he does want to go for play for Bill, Bill Belichick. So, I mean, he is, he's a smart guy. He knows how to play that without, like I say, getting people pissed off. Like even if he were to say, no, I, I would do that hundred percent. I'd go play for Belichick tomorrow. Well, Belichick's not going to be coaching purple anytime soon. So, would that alienate him if he didn't follow Belichick and he came back to Minnesota? And then you got fans going, you asshole, you were supposed to, you, you didn't even want to be here. You just wanted to be with the goat and, and now you're back. So, so he's a very smart man by not tipping his hand either way. And I, I use the word cryptic because in that manner, like I say, he is not tipping his hand and he's not pissing anyone off. He's leaving everything open. And that's, he's smart, that's a smart he's a way smart to play. Guy. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I will say this, uh, even though I shouldn't, uh, because I rip on a lot of my friends uh, for this, or, or one in particular comes to mind. You know, I got friends who pick their fantasy football team based on what the what the ratings are on Madden. You know, and I know I bring that game up a lot, and they're like, "No, dude," and and I just look at it, you're ridiculous. All right, but here's the thing. I I I had been playing a season with with the Vikings uh this year and played every game, you know, every every scheduled game just like this season. And I got my team to the Super Bowl and we lost to the Bills in the Super Bowl, whatever. So then the Bills were in the Super Bowl? Was that? The Bills were in the Super Bowl? Yeah, because I think Mahomes got traded in my season halfway through. So uh, they didn't have to face the Chiefs with Mahomes, you know, like, okay. Right. So so uh, then you have the whole, okay, so I started the next season and free agency comes in. And that's why I love playing this game because you get to make, you know, your general manager decisions. And I decided to put – Cousins back on the roster for two years and paid a lot of money for him. And guess what? Everything that got me the Super Bowl the year before, and Cousins didn't have an ACL injury in my season, but I brought him back and he sucked. So, I mean, I, I don't want to predict things to come in the next year, uh, but I mean, I, I'm through like 13 games and he's not even close to the quarterback that, I had the season before. So I'm wondering is Madden and PlayStation, are they able to figure things out before we are? You know what I mean? Like the Simpsons, they're able to go, this is what I think is going to happen. And, 
And so the more I played these games, I just went, wow, he's like, I can't do the same things I used to be able to do with them. If he doesn't sign with the Vikings, I don't know. Am I getting a foreshadowing right now playing Madden and saying Cousins might not be the bag of chips and everything else that goes along with him? Well, I hope not because, uh, I mean, to your gaming point, I – play with Byron Buxton on MLB the show. He hits me 35 home runs every year. So, um, I, you know, wah, it, wah, wah. <laughs> but, um, I don't, it, it's you, you absolutely like Kirk cousins is the best free agent out there, uh, or best free agent quarterback, but the guy, he's also coming back from an ACL. That's or, right. Uh, uh, an That's Achilles right. Tear, so yep. it, it's hard to, it's hard to know. It, it absolutely is. But I think you take that chance personally. All right. Anything else on the NFL? Uh, you have predictions for this weekend? Can we already do this? Yeah, 49ers, Ravens. Okay. Then that's what I'm hoping for, too. Okay. Uh, I feel somewhat guilty and really bad because I am not feeling what everybody else is feeling in the state right now. Right now and I just, I just can't get caught up. Okay. No one knows what I'm talking about. Joe Maurer is a first ballot motherfucking Hall of Famer. And I can't get past it. It it sticks in my craw. And I don't know why. It I feel guilty because I can't get on the bandwagon. And I can't. And I've watched this guy his whole career. And even I I the feel later bad. the later years have just the, the last couple years of his career, I think, have just completely shadowed your vision of how great this player was. He, when I re, we re watched a lot of stuff on him when, when, you know, he got announced, all this stuff was coming up. I watched a lot of stuff on him. And boy, like, I know to me, he was a Hall of Famer. He was, he was a Hall of Famer. Didn't know about first ballot, but I will say, when you one of the best pitchers in the game currently, Max Scherzer had to create a pitch just to get Joe Maurer to swing and miss, and that is one of his best pitches right now. Yeah, he's a he's a first ballot guy. Oh, oh whoa, whoa, whoa! I thought you said he wasn't. No, he is. I didn't think he was, but he is, man. I, you know, I was having trouble with him just being in the Hall of Fame in general, but I said I could I could give that to you, but I. I still don't believe that he's a first ballot. And I'm just wondering why, because I know you called me a hater the other night and yeah, that might be true. Your uncle does sometimes have that tendency, but what I don't understand about myself being a solid Minnesota sports fan, a Minnesota Homer guy um, who is still based in reality, but I shared this with my my good friends that I watch a lot of baseball with. I watched his what his Ring of Honor induction or his retirement deal at Target Field, and won a dry eye in the stadium. And most for the most part, I mean, I I still start to cry at Little House on the Prairie reruns. Okay, but when there is a story that touches me and like there is something, I, I I'm blubbering right away. I'm I mean, honestly, I do get emotional about because I love sports so much. I watched that whole fucking retirement deal, and he's crying. Everyone else is crying. And I'm like, <laughs> the entire deal. And I think I might have even watched Jeopardy uh, and switched over to Jeopardy as it was going on. And, and I don't get why. I, I can't get behind because here's the deal. I don't understand why there's not a 30 for 30 out on this guy. This is this is the first guy in the history of four big pro sports, right? Hockey, basketball, baseball, football. The first person in the history of American sports who was drafted number one overall from his home state to his home team and became an MVP first ballot hall of famer. He's, he's the only guy that's ever done that. Okay. And so you would think that ESPN would say, this has got to be a 30 for 30. This guy grew up here his whole life. 
He was a high school three-star, four-star sport. Gets drafted by his hometown team. First American League catcher to win a batting title, but he got three. He was an MVP. How many times did he make the All-Star game? Is that eight, nine? Nine, I think it was. And now he's a first ballot MVP, or I'm sorry, Hall of Famer. So in a perfect Minnesota world, I should be eating this shit up with mustard and ketchup on it, and I can't do it. What's wrong with me? I don't know because I was going to say you are a, in the complete minority here, man. I, I, no. I, we have talked about this before, and I, Joe Maurer growing up, man, I think was my favorite player, and he, he just – he was something special for the state. And, and I think he is absolutely did what he had to do for the, for this, for this state. And I don't know. I don't, I don't know why you, cause I don't cry very much at all. Right. I shed a tear during his ceremony. Oh. <laughs> Just oh, to make you're you feel me. bad. You hurt me right now, man. Like, and, and I just, I, I don't get it, man. I, I, okay. I, I guess, We'll go that far now. I, man, maybe I need to grow up. Maybe I need to not be so immature and unprofessional or whatever it is. Uh, and I have proof of what Noah's talking about. And I even have proof of he and I wearing identical Mauer shirts. And I think it's some of the first gifts that I ever got you, you know, for Christmas as a kid were Joe Mauer deals. Um, and man, I just, I, I can't, I can't fall in line with it. And that maybe the problem is with me then. I just think about, like, I was thinking about this the other day, how much maybe we took Joe Maurer for granted when he was, you know, he was lifelong twin and, but rarely, rarely in trade rumors. But, you know, I, I think about like, if you were the New York Yankees, right? He was almost traded to the New York yep. Yankees at one yep. point. Like for 10 years. That's right. How happy would you have been to get that guy? Well, my question, well, wait, like now. if you were, let's say Joe Mauer, it, my question is, would he have been a Hall of Famer if he had made the move to the Yankees? I, uh, oh yeah, I think he would have been cut. I think he would have got your 30 for 30 because he would have been big New York media guy. He would have been way bigger than he was in Minnesota. Okay. Way bigger. And, and I know what I was, he was the first guy who, was was drafted number one overall by his hometown team that played 15 plus seasons and was a first ballot, you know, a Hall of Fame. I mean, yeah. I mean, I the only time I really got excited was when he announced that he was having a kid and he was like, he had twins. Remember, I said, wow, Joe, everything he does, man, he's, you know, blowing mad loads. He, he, he's incredible. Uh, but it, I mean, it just did. And I would, I was talking to a guy at the liquor store the other night and I was like, but if you watch his last eight years as a professional baseball player, you would say, there's no way that guy's a hall of famer. Uh, and, and I got to wonder how many, you know, in the fraternity of baseball players, how many guys are just pissed off right now because it's so hard to be a first ballot. There are a lot of guys that, you know, I saw a lot of, well, if he made it first ballot, why isn't, you know, X, Y, Z. And yep. I'll give it to you. I'll absolutely give that to you. And I think it's just the change in, in how the voting has, has worked and the, the new writers and and whatnot, because there's absolutely a point for, for those people. But um, I don't know. If for, I mean, we, we talked about the last eight years. I pulled it up. I mean, the last eight years, the guy hit almost 300 Every year, um, he, he would give you at least over 60 RBIs. He would, yeah, uh, but, but at that time, hitting OPS singles over 800, I mean, hitting singles wasn't helping us win games. I, I know it doesn't, but matter. you wanted Luisa Rise on your team who only hit singles. And no, hit there was a, there was a, no, there was, there was a different. There was a different spice, a different tangible about a guy like Luis arise but i'm i'm sorry i'm hearing he's being chopped around again if you I was heard just going to say did you know that luisa rise might yeah. get traded again yep yep okay all right well my last question based on this then is what's next fucking world 
Justin Morneau in the Hall of Fame? There's no That's way. The There's no Not way. Not a first. He ain't no a way. first ballot. Absolutely. But <laughs> but you know what? Let me pull up his stats right now because. No, you're just telling me right now. It, what do you I got? One bad. Forget about how good these guys were, though. And okay. how how much fear they put into other teams pitching. I mean, okay. All right. Well, then based on that and talking about how much fear of the MVPs, man, what's that three MVPs for this guy. And he's not a hall of famer more. No one, three MVPs. Yes. Well, Mauer got him too. Right? He was, he was a two time silver slugger. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Four time MVP. Hold on. No, that can't be. No. 2006. Oh, he wasn't back to back. No, no, no. Hold on. No. Baseball no. reference is going crazy. He actually has three MVPs. I thought I he, he has. Had... I think yeah, he has right. two. Yeah, um, right. One, two, three, four, five. Five time All Star, two Silver Sluggers. Hit 281. Yeah, okay. Career. Yeah. yeah. Thousand RBIs. Yeah, and Canadian. So that brings us <laughs> back to. Okay. Now, speaking of. Bats and, and players that no pitcher wanted to face against a Minnesota twin. Um, I was just wondering if you saw that Miguel Sano was signed by the Angels of Los Angeles County, Anaheim, whatever, to a minor league deal. Holy cow. So <laughs> I was going to bring something up last week, and I never did. I don't think we, we talked about baseball, but – and you were going to hate it, but my hot take was that the Twins should have signed Miguel Sano to a minor league deal. Have you seen how he looks now and what care. he is doing? Don't care. He is. He looks like, dude, it's a minor league deal. It doesn't matter. It, it literally doesn't matter. And if he mashes so 40 home runs. Oh, he's not going to get that. Or he'll and hit Aaron, two home runs. Aaron, I love where he's going. I love where he's going. The Angels? Oh, hey, that, well, you know. We try bringing in really good players there and their careers go, let's bring in a shitty ass player and see if we can resurrect his career. And you know what? As far as I'll give you credit, he took a whole year of baseball off and he didn't get fatter. If he got thinner, that's great. It doesn't mean he's smarter. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But you know what? It, it is a, it does not even matter for the angels. He could either not make the team, which doesn't matter or, you know, maybe he makes a team and he's right. great. And and you right. know what? You know it's going to happen. The Twins are going to play the Angels. And all of a sudden, oh, the, the, the Angels have a need at DH for this series. They'll select the contract of Miguel Sano. I would and he'll hit it. one or two, three or four home runs that oh, series. Oh, I don't. I don't. Against Joe Ryan? <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Not worried about any anything more of my – all right. And I, maybe I'm wrong, but you know what? I would double down on what I'm saying right now, man, because um, don't see, I don't see it at all, and I don't see it like, oh, my goodness, it was a David Ortiz blunder. We, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know what we had with Miguel Sano. Yes, we did. We knew exactly what the fuck we had with Miguel Sano. And to me, they, they let him hang around and make money longer than anybody else should have. You know what I mean? Like, well, he signed that extension, and I and I do. I think I could go back and look at the text when he signed the extension. We thought it was a good idea. You and me thought it was a good idea because he came off a pretty nice season that year, and he yeah. signed a a, a, a team friendly extension. But shit the bed after that. So yep. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Well, I was younger back then, so there you go. You know, I, I I'm more stoic and and uh, more of a student of the game because. You know, I, for half of my job, I got to I got to talk sports, so I got to I got to do more research. Anyways, um, all right, I you know I feel we're just under the hour mark right now, and I'm I'm okay because uh, T wolves are about to start, and I want to see uh, what they got planned for us again this evening. Uh, is there anything else that you wanna you wanna go over? Because I think we've done a really good job of covering a lot of things tonight with a lot of passion. That's what you'll get from us. Uh, but but I think we were able to hold it under an hour or so. Unless there's anything else you want to want to go for, you know, get, go for it. 
No, I don't think so. I think we 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 hit uh, some good stuff. All right, uh, Jay Z. I don't believe does own anything else with the Brooklyn Nets, but I'm I'm hoping that we we find a way to uh, to give them 99 problems. For uh, Noah Storzinger, I am Johnny Voss. The podcast will be named later. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.